Hello everyone. The topic of the day that I have chosen is making a modern data centric organization. How to make one and best practices. I'm Lakshmi Venkatesh, Head of Platform and Cloud Engineering, Standard Chartered Bank. Well, before talking about the nitty gritties of making a data centric organization, we need to understand what a data centric organization is. Who is it for? Then let's talk about how to make one. And most importantly, a data centric organization using the modern technology infrastructure, a roadmap, and what it takes to build an infrastructure. Now, think about giving top 10 examples of superhead decisions you have made backed by data. Let's call it number one. Superhead decisions you have made that is not backed by data. Let's call it number two. Which decision steered your team or organization in the right direction? You can easily say, the one backed with data has the likelihood of being approved or called upon for further discussion, whereas the one that is not backed by data has the likelihood of being rejected. Isn't it so? While judgment call or gut feeling is important, data driven decisions make the experiments repeatable and makes your organization more reliable. Any decisions taken in Fortune 500 companies must take the test of compliance and legality. Do you put your data in the same seriousness of legal or compliance? Simply put, if you want to make a data centric organization, all your decision has to pass one or more components called data. The amount of focus organization puts to comply with regulations, every step, every discussion, every decision, every process done in Fortune 500, directly or indirectly, passes through the validation of legal and compliance. We talk about carbon footprinting, ethical employment, legality, compliance. Your decisions has to go through one of these filters, isn't it? Yes, data, one of those filters your organization has. It must be compliant with regulation. It has to go through legal and it has to be backed by data. It's all in the same line. The moment this benchmark is set, rest of the things will emerge. Data is not a nice to have attribute, it is the top mandatory attribute. There is a business price tag on decisions that you make and business do not run on the nice to have attributes. So making data your must have attribute will make your organization data centric. The second definition, I think, what makes it a data centric organization is this. Data is the new oil and it is rightly considered so. But the top 20 oil producing countries are not the top 20 richest in the countries in the world. Would you agree? Having oil on your ground alone does not make you the richest. Not with more crude oil, but the one who processes the crude oil to petroleum makes money. Similarly, having massive amount of data in your organization does not make you a data centric organization. The value of the data is derived from processing, analytics and actionable insights. Let's assume you have been tasked to find out the extent of data centricity for your organization. What are the parameters or factors you should check? In my opinion, these should be the key factors. No decision that you make in your organization passes without the test of legal or complaints, isn't it? Now, does it take the test of data? Number two, is data the centerpiece of your architecture where applications and services operate upon or application is the centerpiece of your architecture. Number three, does your organization's people, process, and technology work with a clear intent to generate, organize, secure, and use the information to enhance the business outcomes? Number four, from the boardroom to the engine room to the shop room, is data used to drive key results for the given objective? Number five, is data considered as a strategic asset or capital or is the heart of your organization that propels the organization forward in the desired direction? Number six, if there is a conflict between your leader and data, who wins? If it is your leader who wins and not backed by data, then you are not a data centric organization, isn't it? Your data wins, then you are a data centric organization. So if your answer is yes to all or most of these questions, then you are either heading or working in a data centric organization. All right, we all get that what a data centric organization is, but tell me who is it for? 
I am a small organization. Should I go for data centric? I am an internet scale organization. And what I am dealing with is petabyte, exabyte, zettabyte, and even who knows, right? You're a bit of data. And do you think I'm not a data centric organization? Now, in my opinion, data centricity should be regardless of the size of the organization or the type of the industry you are in. I will include two more categories to this discussion, brand new organization starting on fresh canvas and legacy systems. While we understand installing data centric mindset on a fresh canvas is easier than for legacy systems, with some systems as old as 25 years, it is much harder to evolve to a data centric organization culture overnight and it involves changes to the mindset, knowledge sets, tool set, etc. We will have to start somewhere. Let's bite the bullet. The time is now. Most of us are talking about cloud first or cloud second. Alongside, why don't we think about what should be in the center? Is it data or application? Okay, tell me one thing now. Are you not a customer centric organization? Any organization is customer centric, right? Now, to put the customer in the centric, you need data. So, I would say data centric organization is for everyone. Small, medium, industry scale, internet scale does not matter. It is for me, so it is for you. To extend on who is it for, data centric is not limited to what data you have, right? You might not be generating a single byte of data as of today. Data centric is not only about leveraging your data. It means finding data wherever it is available to make the right decisions. It could, could be either internal or external, be it market survey, clickstream, peer competition, etc. Key is you do not take decisions based on your gut feeling or judgment call. It should be backed by data and it should be data driven. Internal or external does not matter. Let's take the example of a startup. Should startup be data centric or application centric? As we may not have all flavors of the data on day one, unlike legacy industry scale organization or internet scale organization. Yes, very true. But the biggest challenge in creating a startup is not technology. It's not even about solving a problem. Then what it is? It is about finding a problem. Every problem is a business opportunity. Every problem is a profit opportunity. Data would be the primary tool to locate the unnoticed problem. They are not able to spot something because it's not intuitive or on the face. How do you locate those hidden problems? Data. Data is the tool to unearth this problem. So even before deciding what is the problem you are going to solve for your startup organization, you are in the data centric zone. This is the statistics from McKinsey. According to the report, a data centric organization is 23 times more likely to turn prospects into customers, six times more likely to retain the customers, and 19 times more likely to generate profit as a result. These data points backs my idea of data centric is for everyone. Alrighty, we have discussed the what and the who of the data centric. Now let's talk about the how part. In my opinion, there should be four essential qualities to make a data centric organization. Number one, culture. Number two, strategy. Number three, technology. And number four, process. What is culture? A data centric culture is where everyone from the boardroom to engine room till shop room uses the data effectively for decision making and data as an effective unit of business outcome. A self serviceable culture have the right mindset, knowledge set, tool set, skill set, data set, and make it all set to make a data centric firm. To achieve this, you have your strategic workforce upskill or reskill continuously. And finally, leadership should have the leaders from the data space and this should be non-negotiable. Strategy. Most organizations think application centric strategy rather than data centric strategy. Having the right organizational strategy that is well aligned with the business outcomes supports a data centric organization. From the business side, if it is customer centric, potentially the organization should have data centric strategy from the technology side 
that realizes the customer centricity because if you want to put customer in the center you need data hence it should be data centric technology from roadmap to data modernization that talks about the components of your modern data centric organization you should have a strong roadmap and your people should understand the modern data trends modern data trends should be a dna of our organization that helps you transform and execute and keep modernizing finally process yes we all agree there is a shift in approach and it is going to be a bit difficult there is going to be a shift in approach towards data management governance security and there is going to be a massive mindset change but that is what makes data centric and that is how we should make a data centric organization some more details to the how part starting with culture adapting a data centric culture starts from the leadership team where any decision that is made by the management team is always backed by strong data points even though human judgment is involved in making the decision this is the first essential step for the organization to walk in the data mindset direction the use of the data does not only stop with the decision making process for most of the organization be it legacy or internet organization the input and the outcome is data hence from the producers to the consumers of data understanding that data is the heart of the organization and maintaining the health of the data is imperative to the long standing of the business and is a competition boost in order for your competitors not to eat your lunch once the leadership is set then eventually all the data driven initiatives begin coming from the bottom of the organization and the flow is set your team is modernized empowered with off the job and on the job trainings your core data team personas are defined across simple users power users super users could be enterprise architects to cvo to cto security legal data analyst data scientist data warehouse users admins every role is clearly defined roles and responsibilities are assigned the data leaders cdos visionaries are hired there is clarity the data teams can capture the required data set and information with ease analytics can be done with ease in the data centric organization even though it is an afterthought right self servicing tools are available where data is treated as the product or hub and scope, uh, spoke model or having a data marketplace whichever works efficiently does not matter you think about data first when you start a new project or a program and will potentially include it to the extensive data platform that you have and will work on the application ecosystem to get value from the data this is how you can build data as a product or a platform otherwise data silos is unavoidable the second element of the how part is the strategy and in my mind number 1 organization strategy number 2 data strategy both has to be considered organization strategy any data that comes from your existing customer or business should be able to feed in to get new customers business or at least help you sustain the current one there are two schools of thoughts to this one is it could be application centric or data centric applications come and go data is your permanent asset all your applications or either to source the data or process the data or output the data couple of decades ago we were using mainframes thereafter we started using c or c++ after that we started using java or c sharp for our application stack now we are talking about r python julia etc why is the java outdated is c completely outdated already no it is because the focus has shifted to the data centric r and python and julia are more data focused in an application centric organization you will think data in the aspect of application by application what is the input needed what it should process and what it should output this way you will never be able to think in terms of data platform or data product and you will continue to treat your data in silos your focus will be to extract value from the given set of data rather than thinking about synergizing the data as a whole and treating it as a platform that provides value to your organization 
So this is about the organization strategy and how we should think about it. The second point I would like to focus on is the data strategy. We have to be mindful of what we call a data centric organization. With modern data, sen uh, data trends, we put a data warehouse or a data lake or use data mesh or data fabric and call it a data centric organization. No, it is not. All we are trying to do by putting the data trends or the modern data technologies is that put a massive dump of data into say data lake and say we bring all the data into a central place and now all the value is concentrated and thereby we bring value to the business. Value of the data is not in gathering but in processing the data. Remember the analogy I used in the beginning of this presentation crude oil versus petrol and which has value petrol has value and not crude oil a data strategy should help you to propel your organization growth with the data value lets you think in terms of platform service product rather than project by project or treating data in silos data is considered as the permanent asset making modern data organization from day one rather than modern as an afterthought the extent of how data centric you expect your organization in the next two to five years time from now and finally your data strategy is perfectly in sync with your organization strategy be it customer centric or otherwise the third element on how to make a modern data organization i think about is technology there are two focal points to this number one to have a clear roadmap for modern data organization a data centric organization number two to choose the right data infrastructure for your modern data centric organization let us talk about number one having a roadmap for having a clear roadmap and uh, in order to create a modern data centric organization i think it has five phases identify optimize innovate transform and continue identify first is the identification what do you identify find the growth or data value gap and identify the success criteria. So you first set the, set the stage, get the information and uh, start setting up the stage. The second is to optimize. Free up your money and resources and optimize the data ecosystem. How can you free up the money and the resources? You can, you find out all the manual works that is going on. There could be maintenance optimization that uh, could be required, automate a bunch of processes, free up the resources and the money. Now. At the end of the stage, say for example, if your maintenance budget was 75%, at least try to reduce it by 30%, if not to 30%. The third is to innovate. Now you may have some, uh, you may have freed up some money. Now use that money to build the capabilities. Once you have done that, the next stage is to transform. You have built some capabilities, use those capabilities to modernize. Once you have done that, the final stage is continuum continuous improvement. So this is how you can build a roadmap to have a modern data centric organization. The first phase of the roadmap to make a data centric organization a modern one is identification. The first essential step is to understand the status quo and shake it up a little bit. The identify phase to find your data value gap from the business technology process and people becomes imperative. Setting up KPI and identifying critical success criteria for building a data centric organization is important. How the data is adding value today and how you intend to add value to the organization using the data in the future determines the path and dollar you want to spend for the modern data organization. Data belongs to everyone in the organization. As I said, from the shop floor to the board, uh, from the boardroom to the engine room to the shop floor, data is in the start center and the end of everything an organization does that is how you can build data mindset in the organization when you take business how what do you identify is the data strategy in sync and aligned with your organization and the business strategy that is something you should know is data considered as an asset for your business what is the data architect that and what is it how is it critical to your organization success so all this you need to know what are the gaps that you are solving for you have to identify all this from the technology point of view what are the best ways to find value in the available data and identifying and harvesting new data with the help of the modern data technology trends you have to know 
and in terms of process identify your current data and the analytics culture and estimate the gaps that prevents uh, you from becoming a data centric organization everyone sees one part of the elephant identifying the elephant and transparency and the information sharing is the key so you need to understand what is the current state where you, where you are at going to the people currently what is your resource strength towards data innovation how will you allocate resources towards making the data organization strategy all these things you have to identify estimate the gaps once you have estimated the gaps now you define your core parameters what makes your data organization from people funding functional non functional and uh, implementation aspect etc so what, what what do you have to define say for example in terms of people uh, you will have to define your data team personas from cvo cto cdo data visionaries etc uh, who you need to take the buy in from identify your stakeholders and uh, start talking about the initial fund, funding already know your sponsors prep them on the guesstimates on the funding and pre wire all your team uh, from the functional side you will have to start thinking about the security user experience data interoperability infrastructure interfaces network middleware connectivity configuration everything from the non personal uh, non functional perspective you will have to start thinking from the performance what should be the scalability throughput reliability extendability etc and from the operational perspective you need to know what should be the sla for this particular data item schedule support what is the volume you are going to support what is the time to market what is the storage gap Uh, sorry storage growth latency devops code and security coverage everything you need to know from the operation side from the implementation side you need to define the parameters for the architecture patterns uh, whether it should be isolate or loosely coupled servers you are thinking of service or servers uh, which of the seven hours approach you are going to the cloud strategy you are going to use security by design etc from the cost or funding perspective you have to think about whether you are improving the operational efficiency or reducing them by reducing the maintenance uh, with automation and move the budget into the innovation and uh, slowly ensuring the funding into innovation all those things you need to design define right once these core parameters are defined then you put up put up a block level architecture do a swot analysis of your current data platform bring up the top 10 key functional uh, functionalities offered by your current platform to the business top 10 dependencies top 10 problems that your current platform has then define your top 10 strengths and weaknesses that your current architecture has then come up with the top strengths and the weaknesses that your new uh, new um, architecture that you are proposing you might propose four to five options right for all those option put up a matrix structure so what are the future strength or top 10 future features you want to have in this new architecture or the data platform prepare a list for both long term and short term now after you have completed all your metrics exercise measure your trade offs from the cost versus maintenance uh, versus your organization strategy and uh, just check whether you are in line so this is what in my opinion you should do in the identification phase next comes optimize first step for you to understand as part of this is to understand the past 3 years budget and how much you are spending for maintenance or manual operations and how can you channelize those efforts and energy and funds for data innovation your core of the optimization should be two parts in my head one is free up your money and resources the second thing is establish optimal environment for the data optimization for this i am Uh, positioning across five units or five pillars to call it one is strategy technology process people and data platform strategy as part of strategy how can you optimize you leverage and embrace automation you move away from the maintenance model you move away from the manual model and you leverage and embrace automation that is number one number two define data leadership roles be it cdo data strategy leader data governance leader etc so this will bring a space for the data in the leadership then data mindset becomes top down and bottom up the third is increase the data literacy what i mean by increasing the data literacy is that start with data literacy and train all your resources to be analyst who understands data all your uh, people in the organization should understand the data and that should be the bare minimum criteria that is what i mean by increasing the data literacy the second uh, pillar that i want to talk about is technology first as i said 
as a strategy you have to leverage automation in order to leverage automation you have to identify what are the pain points what is the maintenance that is going on what are the manual processes that is happening which part of the businesses are uh, writing their own code be it in access or excel etc find out all those things automate and data quality should be your first priority the third pillar that i want to talk about is the process be agile simplify and standardize all your processes identify the current platform shelf life licenses etc you have to have everything intact and the fourth pillar is the people i am not putting it forth deliberately but last but not least spec out all the data roles for data engineering leads etc right sizing with the natural iteration you can do outsourcing contract stuff packaging anything is okay in when it comes to people the final part is the data platform strategy fix basic data access issues i am specifically saying data access strategy this is different from your original strategy original strategy is how you have to how you have to free up the money and resources this data platform strategy is how uh, what are the cr critical steps you will have to do as part of your data platform strategy fix basic data access issues identify the data owners study all the data platforms uh, options and validate the broad strategy so these are the things you will have to do in the optimization phase now let's assume you have automated and freed up money and resources most of the manual uh, jobs has been sorted uh, maintenance has been cleared as part of innovate use the money to build the capabilities building islands of capabilities then you expand from there you may have in house expertise on blockchain champions in data platform and azure now you fund these projects to build these projects so that you can be a champion here i have four pillars one is the technology process people and data platform and strategy as part of technology you prioritize your innovation consolidate all the data platforms as much as you can is part of the process you enable devsecops enable tdd um continuous delivery data governance cloud native for modern data platform and the open source where applicable not for the data uh, platform as such but in your ecosystem you can have lot of open source not only for your data ecosystem that is uh, then the next pillar is people define strategy for your workforce modernization it could be training on the job or off the job or it could be uh, just self study whatever it is just define the strategy as part of their day job they should have time to read in the office outsourcing contract stuff anything anything could be your people strategy and finally data platform strategy build comprehensive data platform strategy fill critical data application gaps for the business so these things will enable you to complete your innovation bring a pure data platform strategy you must have define the core parameters for your data platform by this be it functional non functional Uh, the how what when who everything will would have been defined as you have innovated effectively now your organization is ready to transform you have not yet transformed yet now you have only built the capabilities now using those capabilities your organization is ready to transform and let's see how till here everything is on paper so far what you did you just identified all the manual processes in the identification phase and then optimize you try to uh, resolve for the manual processes and you freed up your funds and resources then in the innovate uh, phase you used those money to create the capabilities now you are in the transformation phase with those capabilities that you have built you can ensure that the transformation takes place effectively this is the execution or implementation phase where we use the capabilities to modernize the data platforms and to build a data centric organization once you have completed this step you have made a modern data centric organization implementation can happen via in house or um, outsourcing from the people perspective it is up to you but you come what what is important is that your works workforce automate uh, sorry workforce optimization you continuously upskill and reskill your uh, resources there's no end date to it train everyone continuously train everyone make data champions and uh, create data ambassadors 
for each of your domains or teams or units. These data ambassadors should ensure that the technology, process, and the data platforms are always up to the top notch and the transformation is happening. Once the transformation has happened, it is not ended. They continuously evolve and modernize the data and create value of top data every day. So this is how you can completely transform into a modern data organization. This is the roadmap, I would say. Last but not least, to create a modern data organization, it is imperative to choose the right data infrastructure. I have distributed this trend across seven basic trends. One is foundational, the second being trusted, third is strategic, fourth is accelerated, five decentralized, sixth is democratized, and seventh being monetized. Let me start with foundational, the first data trend. Data as a mainstream, where the data-related technology processes has reached a plateau of productivity, as per Gartner's terms. Once thought dead is back into business due to cloud and modern data platforms. As part of this trend, I'd like to highlight Data Warehouse is back with modern data uh, cloud databases. Big Data is revived with Spark. Increasing use of artificial intelligence with multiple paths and the SaaS providers. So this is what I want to talk as part of the foundational trend. The second is the trusted. With internet organizations focus on the data, protection or security is part of this trusted uh, trend. I'd like to see this as uh, ring fencing data. This should be your initial trend and uh, ring fencing data uh, from the generation of the data till archival and beyond is in my opinion extremely important. So as part of this trend, what is this modern data technology providing us is the differential privacy and authenticated or data provenance. This is also called lineage. Uh, coming from finance, authenticated provenance or lineage is extremely important because garbage in is garbage out. Data provenance or lineage is the key to understand the source and the authenticity of the data. The third trend I would like to highlight as part of the modern data uh, uh, infrastructure or the technology is strategic. Here I want to talk about simplification of the data. So the core of this particular strategy is how do you simplify the data? How uh, you can see that data warehouse has uh, made a big comeback with the Delta or the data lake. Uh, data fabric is helping wherever the worlds collide, be it cloud and on-premise, be it relational and non-relational, be it data and analytics. So there are like uh, complexity of the data aware, uh, that is uh, that is very heterogeneous. This data fabric or simplification of the data helps to uh, keep it pretty lean and mean and uh, is it that, that is the strategic trend I would see and also data hub or uh, database as a service, delta lake, uh, data mesh, uh, single database for uh, cross needs, data catalog, uh, all these things including the self-service data preparation, data management solution, data integration tools, all these things I I will categorize as part of this strategic trend. The fourth trend I would like to talk about is accelerator. The core of this trend is optimization of the data. When we talk about optimization of the data, one is to talk about the streams. Uh, that becomes the essential thing. Long live streams. Now ETL has shifted into ELT. We, are, we can do a lot of uh, ELT because uh, your uh, transformation can be done on the fly with all the uh, products that is provided on the cloud. Uh, be it Kafka, uh, Knife, Niffy, or uh, the cloud services that helps you. And augmented data management, uh, data into business insights, explainable AI, all this I will categorize into Accelerate. The next phase I would like to talk about, the fifth trend, is decentralized. There is always a constant debate about whether the data should be centralized or decentralized. What is your take? Minus, it can be both. With the advent of modern data platforms, data as a service and data as a product, why this should be either decentralization or centralization? With organization generating more and more data, there should be a proven ability to switch between centralization and decentralization. This should not be an afterthought and should be an inception point and must be created as part of the data architecture itself. My sixth trend I would like to talk about is democratized, where I would like to highlight on the democratization of the data. How can you do that? Uh, data ops, SecOps, ML ops, AA ops, auto ML, data quality frameworks, data catalog. These are the few things that will help you keep democratized. 
and finally monetized you have created a data platform data as a product uh, a data marketplace what do you do with this now you can monetize if data is the new oil then we should be able to sell or create derivatives out of it isn't it and monetize the data best ways to go about it are data and ai marketplaces and exchange platform exchanges platforms data as a service and data as a product so this is what to me defines a good modern data technology infrastructure with this i am concluding my presentation again in summary every enterprise today by default is a data organization data is the middle and all technology strategy roadmaps application is to support the data to bring value to business organization's performance is based on qualified and qualitative decisions and those decisions must be backed by data at the end of the day technology and data is for the people so please make it simple and please make it usable if data is good and usable it can bring huge value to the organization think is your organization's data crude oil or petroleum thank you for your time